Okay, so July is almost here and while people are busy discussing iOS 14 and widgets, we Android folks can talk about apps, apps that make this Android system great. This is Vadikun Techwiser.com and let's begin. First up, we have the recently released Made in India app that lets you scan the barcode of any product and determine the origin country of the manufacturer. Let's check it out. First up, let's try with Realme Buds Q. And it's China. I, I thought it was an Indian startup. Either way, next up we have Sony earphones and it's Japan. Well, goes well. And finally, let's try Amul and there you go, India. The message says, congratulations, you are now contributing to the Atmanirbhar initiative. So it seems to work, doesn't it? Well, not really. As per GS1, the authority that provides Indian barcodes, the first three codes show the country of origin, which is usually the country in which the trade item has been produced or manufactured. So for instance, a company could be Chinese, but it has obtained the barcode from GS1 India, so that will show up as India. Or if the product is manufactured in India, it will show up as India. Overall, while all the apps work, it's not highly reliable. We recommend you do your own research, like you can just type company name, headquarters. It will mostly give you an idea about the country origin of the company. Links below, moving on. Okay, so Vita is a new free video editor that everyone should check out. In simple words, consider Vita as Canva, but with a video editor. First of all, the whole interface, timeline, and editing layout is designed for portrait mode. We edit our Instagram stories on this. By the way, we are getting quite active on Instagram. So if you want to know the team TechWiser and behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram. First link in the description. Now back to the editor. The biggest highlight of Vita are these templates. Let's pick something. You can just download these templates, put up your clips, replace it with your own clips, leave these effects and music and there you go. Nice edit. Also Vita gives you a lot of transitions, text templates, audio effects, background music to use for free uh, as of now. So yeah, check it out before the dev changes their mind. FYI, as of now, you can export everything at 1080p without watermark and that's just rare as of now. In case you still get a watermark, just head over to the settings and turn off this watermark toggle. Acture is a plain simple app. It's so simple that I had to wrap my head around it. Why wasn't it done before? So, you have to turn on this active mode and now whenever you unlock your phone, it asks you the reason for it. Trust me, at times I just lock my phone back because I had no reason to unlock it. So it aims at increasing your productivity and lower down your mobile phone usage. Additionally, there's even a toggle within the app that lets you remind the reason why you unlocked your phone. Super handy. I keep it on during my office hours so that I don't aimlessly use my phone. A small suggestion to the dev, please offer an option to schedule or time this active mode. Next up, I have been a long-term Lightroom user on desktop and mobile, mainly due to this HSL tab. In case you don't know, HSL lets you individually edit the saturation, hue and brightness of individual colors. So I was really excited when Adobe launched Adobe Photoshop camera with a built-in editor, but the editing part is mostly meh. However, the highlighted part of this camera is these camera filters or lenses as Adobe calls. Unlike Instagram and Snapchat, it's real time and you can apply it on the photos you have clicked before. Here, have a look at the sky replacement filter. It looks so nice and definitely sellable if that's the word. As of now, the number of filters is pretty less and looks quite similar. My favorite ones are these cool 3D ones that can put stuff in the background as well as the foreground. That's unique from Instagram filters. And these pop ones, these look so well made. On a side note, talking about filters, you can try this portrait.ai app which converts your pictures to 80s portrait. Pretty dope.
Remember the ever so popular parallax wallpapers? Anyone? Well, LucidPix is another parallax app, but it converts your pictures to 3D images using AI. Here, have a look at this bottom-up shot of India Gate. The image already sells the depth part and LucidPix does the perfect job on it. It looks like you're peeking around the building. Apart from these, the app feels a bit bloated with social media integration. Moreover, in the privacy policies, I couldn't find the mention of the retention time of user data and neither the option to manually delete your data. So use it at your own discretion. Moving on to Wavelet, it's an equalizer app which I'll rate on par with ViperFX and maybe more friendly because it doesn't require root. Now Wavelet is primarily for headphones because it has a whole database of headphones for which it can auto EQ but you can use it with pretty much any earphones, TWS or neckbands. The best part is the equalizer isn't always on like the other Android equalizer apps. You don't have this persistent notification. It only kicks in when you launch a music player. On top of it, it has pretty useful built-in presets. Have a look. My Realme Buds Air have stopped functioning completely. So I'm down to using these Bode Bass Heads 225, but too much bass, you know. So I use this bass reduction preset and tune it a bit and it works. You can try this U-shaped and V-shaped EQ, that warm sound signature, you'll love it. Okay, widgets. Even iOS 14 has widgets now, inspired by I guess. Either way, Android had lock screen widgets way back in Android 5, it was removed later enters lock screen widgets, which lets you have widgets on your lock screen. Cool, right? Though the app is paid at 130 INR or around $1.99, but totally worth it. I usually have my to-do notes on the lock screen, so I can take a quick glance. Also, if you put up multiple widgets on the lock screen, you can swipe to access them, just like some of the newly released OS. You know if you know. Next up, screen copy, which we have covered before, but there are now cool new updates. So Microsoft Your Phone lets you mirror your Android screen, copy clipboard, but only with some exclusive Android devices like Samsung and OnePlus. However, with screen copy, clipboard sync works with any Android device and Windows PC or Linux PC. You copy on Android and here you can paste on Windows. Really helps when you have to share a link or copy a large piece of text. It just works seamlessly. Next, you can also press Ctrl Shift O to wake up your screen. This really helps if you have your device connected via ADB over Wi-Fi. You don't have to reach for your phone that way. Hashtag lockdown laziness. So if you use a Huawei or on a device, I don't need to tell you how aggressive the battery optimization is. Same is the case with me UI. In case you have no clue what I'm talking about, ever happened to you that you open an app and suddenly receive all its notification? Well, that's Android's adaptive battery for you. It works awesome on Pixel devices, but OEMs. So here's a new app called Don't Kill My App. It's from the makers of Sleep My Android app, which is supposed to measure sleep data, but it gets killed in the process. So they came up with don't kill my app and it basically benchmarks your device on how aggressive the battery optimization is. They also made a website with the same name to shame the OEMs from not killing apps. The rankings are interesting, I thought Huawei should have made it to the top. Finally, pro tip. If you're into vlogging or cinematography or even YouTube, you would have heard of the popular Filmic Pro Camera app. The Pro Camera app that cost 1000 INR. Well, Pro Take is an alternative. It's free, but not that free. The good part is it lets you apply a number of presets to your footage. Hence, if you vlog or shoot, you can color grade the footage beforehand. And no, it's not one of those cheap Insta filter types. My favorite feature is these aspect ratios. So suppose you do letterboxing to your footage or export it in 18 by 9 aspect ratio. You need to be careful while shooting the video. Our Sony a7 III provides a guideline to show that this portion of the footage would be cropped in post 
and this feature is mostly available in high-end cameras now protake does that for you choose the aspect ratio and it'll show you a guideline of the area that would be cropped in post protake also has focus peaking so while shooting you're aware about what's in focus and what's not you also get custom frame rates bit rate the sad part is you cannot shoot in raw for free that's paid at around ten dollars per year i would have appreciated a flat one-time fee to at least buy those raw presets well, that was the list. In case you feel I missed out on any awesome app, let me know in the comments. This is Pratik signing off. See you soon.